Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Sam and I'm an instructional designer who transitioned from teaching to instructional design about six years ago. I'm super excited to be making this video today because if you saw the title of the video, I've hit 500 subscribers, which is just so wild because I'm having such a fun time creating videos for this YouTube channel. And it makes me super excited to know that some of these videos are resonating with y'all. So in this video, I wanted to answer some of the most commonly asked questions that I get either in my DMs or in comments on YouTube or conversations that I have with transitioning teachers that I mentor. So this video will cover topics ranging from why I started my YouTube channel to how I transitioned to being an instructional designer and maybe a few bonus questions. So let's get into it. So question number one is why did I start this YouTube channel to begin with? I started this YouTube channel almost exactly a year ago, maybe a year and a month ago to this date. When people would reach out to me and they would ask for resources, I didn't want to just like here, read my blog post because I didn't really have a lot of time to go ahead and actually like help teach or train them or kind of explain what I needed to explain. So I created this YouTube channel to kind of help create content that was more scalable and could help more people so that I didn't get like burned out from having a lot of one-on-one -on -one long, you know, hour to two hour long training discussions with people. And don't get me wrong, I love doing that, but it just does take a lot of time when I'm trying to like figure out how to balance like going to the gym and like socializing with friends and working and all of that. And as a byproduct of starting the YouTube channel, I've created a really cool community of career transitioners, instructional designers. I love having all of you here. It's been really fun to connect with y'all and just get to kind of hear about your journeys and see how my journey could maybe help inform yours. So the next question I get a lot is what subject did I teach when I was teaching? I taught middle school science, I taught biology, I loved it. I think, you know, controversial opinion, but I think middle school is the best age to teach because there's so much transition, it's so much fun. And I loved every second of it. And that leads me to one of the most common questions that I get when I tell people that I was a teacher, you know, people I work with, they always ask, do you miss teaching? And the answer to that is yes, I always miss teaching. I loved teaching, but I was really burnt out and I wanted to try something new. When I was teaching, you know, I found a lot of fulfillment in connecting with students and like teaching them about the human body or cells. And so now it's just a matter of finding new ways to get that fulfillment, which has definitely been a journey and it's not like something that was very easy for me. It's a constant, you know, pull on like, I should be doing more, but also like I enjoy my job. I actually love what I do, but I wanna be helping people more. It's like a weird balance that I'm still trying to navigate. I've found that like blogging and creating these YouTube videos really does give me that sense of a fulfillment where I still get to help and teach people but I'm not necessarily burning myself out in the process. I also sometimes will teach after school coding programs to middle schoolers, which I think also kind of helps scratch that itch of wanting to be back in the classroom. So the next question is related to instructional design. It is how long did it take for me to find my first instructional design job? It took a few months, let me just say that. It wasn't an easy transition by any means to find a full-time instructional design role. I think I applied to upwards of like 200 roles. And I'll post a tweet that I tweeted a long time ago about it. But essentially, I didn't really know what I didn't know about how to apply to like tech roles, I guess, or how to like use LinkedIn. And I'll link some of my videos about things that I've learned down below. I have a whole playlist of like how to apply to ID jobs now based on all of the mistakes and experience that I've gained over the years. Hopefully y'all don't make the same mistakes I did. Similar to that, people ask, did I go to school for instructional design? What sort of upskilling did I do to get my instructional design jobs? This question kind of comes with two parts. I did get a master's degree in curriculum design and instruction, but that was for my K-12 credential. I do think a lot of like what I learned was useful and applicable, but I also think that I didn't need to go through like a whole master's degree program to learn what I did. The things that I learned, whether it was like 
how to design a course, like what a instructional design program or training program should look like. I learned mostly through like books and creating things myself and getting feedback on them. Link some books down below that I've really enjoyed that have helped a lot, as well as some related videos that I've made. Other upskilling that I did was I taught myself to code. That was, I think, one of the bigger ones. I was teaching myself basic HTML and CSS. And during that time, I kind of kept my own blog of everything I was learning. So I would write down tutorials. I would like create mini videos for myself in this blog. It doesn't exist anymore. I wish it did. And so teaching myself that and documenting my journey was also one way I upskilled. So creating all the videos was one way that I upskilled because writing and videos are pretty much the bread and butter of like what you do as an instructional designer. So the next question is, how did I make the transition from teaching to ID life? And I mentioned it before, while I was teaching, I was also taking like intro to HTML and intro to CSS online classes and documenting my journey because I knew I wanted to learn more technical skills. The nice byproduct of me creating this blog was that it actually served as my portfolio when I started applying to jobs. So I had a bunch of my writing samples, I had a bunch of video samples, I had, you know, tutorials where I would include like screenshots and like I would annotate the images just so I could make sure that it was super clear and that served as like the basis of my portfolio. Once I had that, I started to apply to like contract and um, part-time roles. So I would take, I worked at two different companies where I was on part-time and I would I was like a curriculum developer where I would create like different content questions and be paid per question. It was very low pay, but they were ed tech companies, meaning they were educational tech companies like your Coursera's or your edX or like your, your Khan Academies. And like they would pay you as like a contractor, like on a per question basis to kind of help build up their archive and library of questions. So I did that. I was able to get those companies like onto my LinkedIn profile. So it was like, I had this kind of tech edge where I had my foot in the door in the tech world. So the last question that I'll talk about is a nice fun one from my friend Kim. And she asked, how does it feel to be a published author? Which I very much appreciate for her for asking because I don't always talk about the books that I've written, but I do love them very much. So if you don't know, I'm an author, I'm a published author, and I've self-published books. So my first book is called The Coding Workbook, Build a Website with HTML and CSS. And this is actually a byproduct of all that blogging I did when I was teaching myself how to code. I, you know, I was teaching myself, I was still in the classroom, I was documenting everything, and I realized like I had a bunch of content and tutorials about building a website with HTML and CSS. And so as I was searching for my first ID job, I thought, you know, I might as well see if I could turn what I had written into a book because I have instructional design skills. I have teaching skills. I'm straight out of the classroom. I also have technical skills. So let's try to pitch this to people. So in December, 2021, I think, this was published by No Starch Press. I'm super proud of this because not only is it like a literal published book, but I reference this a lot when I'm working as an instructional designer. I didn't think I would. I always thought that this book would be for like middle schoolers and up, but I've used it a lot as an instructional designer because when I'm creating courses in our training platforms, there are some times when I want to be able to like change a certain font or a color or like a background of something, but they don't have that color native in the platform. And so I can use some coding skills to kind of go into the back end and adjust things as needed or like change font sizes or like um, create cool like interactive features for training. And yeah, so I mean, if you're interested in learning basic web development and HTML, CSS skills, consider checking it out. My self-published book is called Create Your Online Course, 
I wrote this based on everything I know about building an online course, everything I've learned in my past almost six years working as an instructional designer. This is for both individuals who are interested in creating an online course for themselves to kind of teach their knowledge, but also for teams that are trying to build out like an education program and need help getting started creating those training courses and modules. If you're looking to create your portfolio, I, I mean, I think this would be really useful in teaching you how to create those ID portfolio projects. Because if you wanna create like mini courses for your portfolio, you're gonna to wanna to make sure you kind of follow this general process because as you're like explaining your portfolio projects to like potential recruiters and hiring managers, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you're following like this general process that most IDs use. So yeah, that's my my books. I also have like a coloring book that I created, but um, but these two are like the actual like text-based books, which I really love. The cool thing about this book also is that you don't need a computer. It's all based in this book. So it's just like, you can teach yourself to code directly in this workbook. You could take it anywhere. You don't need Wi-Fi. You could go camping with it and learn to code. So that is it for my 500 subscriber video. I honestly want to thank y'all so much for being here on this journey with me. I've been having so much fun creating these videos and just kind of like talking about my experience. And I really love interacting with y'all in the comments and talking about our journeys. It's, it's always interesting to hear people's stories. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe down below. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.